So, generators. Well, I've bought myself a super cheap auto cheapy uh, because we need to run a CPAP machine for my financial manager when we're camping. And this is the one I've got. Now, I've read a few things in the, uh, what are we saying, the feedback on the Super Cheap Autos website about this, and they say it ships empty of oil. Um, and mine smelled of fresh engine oil when I got it. Um, and I noticed that in the side, behind this cover here, there's two little tubes that look like they're breathers, one for fuel and one for oil. So I think it's been shipped at a funny angle and all the oil has drained out, which would be evidenced by the fact that there was a bunch of fresh engine oil on the bottom of the unit. So, um, yeah, I've never run this in, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find some engine oil to put in it. Um, if I've got the right viscosity, and if I can find the right viscosity listed anywhere in here. So, yeah, I'm going to do some reading. We're going to fill it up with oil and possibly some fuel, and we'll go from there. Alright, so reading the manual, it's taking... 600 mil of either looks like 15w40 huh same oil my rover uses and i've got a bunch of synthetic all right i'll put some of my rover synthetic oil in there and see what we do all right so welcome to my oil stand driveway and we're looking in the side of the generator now now i've taken some oil in here which is actually 15w40 not 15w30 it's a little on the thicker side but there's already some oil in here. This, by the way, is the oil bottle that was supplied with the unit. I'm going to pull out our dipstick here for a bit. And yeah, it's only wet right on the low side there. So we'll give it a little bit more oil. Um, but yeah, the difference in this oil isn't too bad, um, especially if it's warm. I'll just give it a little top up here. We'll see how we go. We'll be right back. So looking at the oil level in here now, if we put our cap back in here and do it up, and then we'll take it out again and see what the little baby dipstick on there says. Although it's up to the bottom end of the threads, which is what it was showing on the diagram in the manual. Um, it looks like we're about halfway between the two marks. So that looks good, but there's certainly some oil in there. I had to put about a good 100 mil back in here. So let's put this back in and let's see if we can get some fuel into this. All right, so we've got about a liter and a half of fuel in it and we've got oil in it. Need to figure out how to start the thing. So we'll turn it around a bit and we'll see what we have to do. According to this, I need to turn this to the Start position and close the choke. There's another switch around here apparently. That's on, that's off. Um, I think that's all we've really got to do here. Let's give it a yank. Oh, what's that? Fuel tap is on. Oh. Right, I'd missed a step. There's a um, an air vent on the top of the fuel cap. So let's see how we go now. We've we'll also let the fuel bleed through a little bit. Much better. All right. Um, the low oil alarm just went off, so I think we need to put more oil in it. All right. So it took about another 200 mil of oil. And it's not surprising considering it's the first time it's ever been run. It probably will have sucked a little bit of oil back into the system. So, we'll wind this up again. Just do it loosely for now. We'll piss off our extra oil out of the way. And uh, everything else seems to be in order. So let's see how we go again. Too bad, could be worse. Let's see what eco mode does. It's 
So eco mode is uh, quite doable, and especially if I've got a big 30 meter lead, that might be alright. So I'm going to let this warm up, and then I'm going to park it around the corner, and uh, see how it runs for a couple of hours. Alright, we're going to be inside my folding camper trailer that my apprentice has messed up. And we've got it in eco mode around the corner. We're just going to turn the fan on. Which is running quite nicely. And the generator hasn't picked up too much noise. They're doing relatively well. So I'm going to leave that running to aerate this room for a bit. And uh, we'll see what its fuel usage is like. Uh, I'm doing most of this video because I wanted to buy one of those really good Yamaha silent ones, but 2600 bucks didn't quite seem justifiable for the occasional camping trip. So, we'll see how this goes. So, I'm not sure how loud this will sound, um, but I'm standing right next to it and it's uh, still at a comfortable volume in eco mode, even though I've got something running off it right now. So, um, I'm pretty sure if I went back at a suitable distance it would be quite tolerable. 20 meters away and I'm not looking down my driveway because it's really messy looking um, but you can probably hear here the generator at about 20 meters is at about a comfortable conversation level I do have a sound meter kicking around somewhere so we might go grab that and find out exactly what the noise levels are I have a sound meter and we're going to listen we're around the corner of the house at the moment We're looking at about a 60 or 70 decibels around the corner and you can tell when I talk that my voice is probably slightly higher than that. So let's go around the corner. So go back to our previously 20 meter spot and we'll have a look here. So we're still looking about 70 decibels at about 20 meters. Let's go up to about 10. So we're not too bad at 10 metres away. Let's go right up next to it in eco mode. Which I can't see. Let's turn around. Where are we? So if we're sitting right next to it, we're looking at about 76 to 80 decibel, right near the exhaust. But if I stand up, and I take probably two steps away, we can't really see much on the screen here, but we're reading about 72 to 73 decibels right near it. Now let's bump it in, let's turn off eco mode. At full tilt, standing about an arm's length away, we're looking about 73 to 75 decibels. We'll go back to 10 meters. Between about 68 and 70 decibels. Let's go back around the corner. Alright, and we're back at campsite around the corner. It's about 65, 67 decibels at full tilt around the corner. So, um, I ran it for about 20-25 uh, minutes and let it run everything. Nothing seemed to go wrong. Um, at some point we're going to have to hook this up to a CPAP machine, as it, this is what we bought it for and see if it'll get it through a full eight hours on eco mode. I don't know if it will, but, uh, and we often don't sleep for a full eight hours when we're camping anyway. Something usually wakes us up, namely the kid. So, um, we'll see what happens anyway. But overall, this doesn't look too bad. Um, now you're probably at this point questioning why am I doing this video? And there'll probably be a prelude that I'll add to this at the start of the video. Um, so you may well have already heard this at this point, but um, I couldn't find any real sound information on these, and this was going on special. 
So I thought I'd take the gamble and buy one, and I didn't pay very much. I think it was about 300 Aussie dollars, not much. Um, especially not with the way the stock market's going at the moment. Uh, it's worth about 50 cents to the US dollar last I checked, maybe less now. Um, but anyway, so hopefully we can fill in some information about actually how they sound and how they work and whatnot. Um, I can't imagine an engine being too much more quiet than this, although I've never heard one of those uh, Yamaha ones up close, but uh, I hear they're very quiet. In any case, this is certainly functional, and at the end of a 30 meter extension lead, probably quite fine to use. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, see how we go with the CPAP machine, and uh, we'll be back with some reviews on that. Alright, so, test run time. We're going to run this tonight when it's dark, and run the CPAP machine, and see how far 3 litres of fuel gets it. But for now, I've attached the supplied earth rod, we're going to follow this lead all the way inside and see if it will actually run the CPAP machine. It's currently running on eco mode. Alright, we've got our CPAP machine plugged into the generator. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. So it seems to be running alright, there's some air flowing out that side. Let's go and see what the generator's doing. Right, so the heating element is now in the heating phase and uh, things have got a little bit noisier. It's hunting a little bit, but uh, we'll see if it settles down in a couple of minutes. Alright, so the CPAP machine here seems to be running quite smoothly. So we're doing relatively well. Look, I think for an initial test this is alright. We'll see how long we get over it uh, overnight. I've been to speak to the neighbours and um, I've come to an arrangement as where, in where we can run this in such that it won't disturb the neighbours so much and they, they understand what we're doing. So uh, hopefully we won't upset them too much. But yeah, let's uh, go on to the night test and see what happens from here. Now before we do the night test, there's a couple of other things I want to do. I want to test the DC side of things. So I have this spotlight here with a 100 watt halogen globe in it. That draws about four and a half, five amps. We can run that on eco mode without too much trouble. And it handles it without any really struggling. So the 12 volt side of things fine. The other thing we're going to do, I'm going to plug into the USB here my uh, apprentice's tablet. We'll see how we go charging that. It is charging. We'll give that a little while and uh, see what we get out of that. Then I'll find something to put over this so we don't, uh, so the screen doesn't get crushed. All right, we'll be back in a minute. There is one other thing I want to do before I leave this thing unattended overnight. And that's do a leakage test. So I'll plug in my good leakage tester here and uh, see if it actually has any sort of RCD properties. So let's set a 30 milliamp trip um, at a standard trip. So no kind of trip there, let's go fast trip. Alright, so even at 180 degrees out of phase, no RCD properties whatsoever, even at 250 milliamp. So this machine would probably kill you in an earth fault situation, so I probably need to find myself an RCD for this thing. But uh, in either case, we'll see how we go for the night test. Alright, so this ran for about an hour, and uh, I've come out to check the fuel level, and I haven't noticed a real drop. It's maybe used about 100 mil or so. Not too bad for an hour's running. So I guess the real test will be tonight when it gets dark. Alright. Now the handy guys down at Bunnings did a click and collect, and found me uh, an inline RCD. So we can plug this in for safety with the generator tonight. That'll be handy. All right, so it's night time now, and we're gonna plug in our RCD, and then we're gonna go up to the other end and see if our trip time tester will actually trip the thing. While the unit has a test button on it, I don't think I'd be able to um, 
certified as ASN ZS 3760 um, compliant if I didn't actually leave it plugged into a cable and tested from the other end. So let's go up the other end. We'll fire this up and try it out. So we have a glowing plug on this end. This always makes me nervous when they use orange neons because I think the plug's having a meltdown. A good old hearing aid bag. Got lots of these from days when I used to work for Australian Hearing. Let's plug in our trip time tester. And let's see, let's dial up 30 milliamps at the rated trip time. Let's go half rated. Didn't trip at half. Let's tie the rated 30 milliamps. Didn't trip. Let's try 100 milliamps. Oh, our RCD is not tripping. Let's go fast trip. So, RCD doesn't trip. Huh. Let's try half amp. Alright, so RCD is not doing its job. And I do have the earth stake in, but uh, maybe there's an earth fault on this cable. I'm going to pull my extension lead out and see if I actually have a good cable. This video just got a little bit longer because of that safety test failure I now need to find where it is. I use this lead with camping and I don't want to die using it. So we're going to take my shitty meter here and check for earth bond. Let's see if we've got it. Right, so we've got earth bond. Let's try active. All right, and let's try neutral. We do, okay. So we've got, all three of these are connected in the right order. Um, we'll just make sure that nothing has come disconnected in the plug. This is why they're transparent, so that you can see that. Um, maybe my trip test is wrong. I'm gonna go see if I can trip an RCD somewhere else in the house with it and see if my test is functioning. All right, so I'm going to connect to the kitchen point, which is also on the shed. I can see the lights out there as well. We're going to go at 30 milliamps and check that the main board RCD trips. And it has indeed tripped. And very quickly at that too. So my workbench is now on UPS backup and 12 volts. And it hasn't yet dropped over to 12 volts on the DVR, but that will shortly. Let's go back out and turn that RCD back on. One of these should have tripped off. I'm not sure which one. I think this is the garage. Oh. My uh, fence unit is going to be buzzing until it resets. But we should be right. There we go. Now let's go and see if I'm on UPS still you would have noticed in that last video uh, or last clip rather I flicked off an already on breaker and flicked it back on again off to the side there was another breaker that had actually tripped um, when this house was rewired or at least the switchboard was there was a bit of oddities done and um, turns out my shed is powered off the kitchen power point that I just tested that was also the first one I checked when I walked in here after the sparkies had been in and that RCD did not trip. So I think they did a piggyback and hooked that other one up. But yes, the one that I had enabled after all this was actually still connected. Um, it was just tripped and it was off the side that you couldn't see in the camera. So now we've got to work out why my cable doesn't trip in RCD. At this point, we've established that my tester works and that RCD works. So now I've plugged into the same power point with my 30 meter lead. I'm going to plug my RCD tester into that one with the same settings. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so 20 milliseconds, it's tripped. I think the lead's fine. Let's go and turn that back on again. Okay, so now we have our inline RCD and we're plugged into my desk board which has a plug top RCD supplying it. We're going to reset that. I'm going to plug my trip tester into this. Um, before I do it, I will use the internal test and it clicks and turns off. So, 
Let's try now with the same settings. Let's trip to both RCDs this time. This time, mate. All right. Let's go turn that back on. In fact, it's tripped all three RCDs. Okay, so we're at a bit of a mystery at the moment. Um, now, I have actually attached the earth rod as designed on that generator and hammered it fairly firmly into the ground. But that shouldn't matter with this. We should have an earth return on this. Why is that not happening? I'm going to do some homework because there's probably some witchcraftery in here. I'm really nervous about using mains voltage without any kind of safety on it. So I want to get to the bottom of this and fairly soon. Right, so I had a chat to old school Google, aka my old man. He's uh, an ex-SEC uh, appliance repair man. Uh, now he tells me that uh, most generators don't have an earth and a neutral connection. On metal framed ones, it's usually done through the chassis of the generator. But because this is a double insulated one, there's no exposed metal parts. There's no earth connection between neutral and earth. So whilst I have the earth stake in there, um, <laughs> I can't trip an RCD because there's no route back to earth. The benefit of that in, is that um, if something is to go wrong and I have a catastrophic fault and say active accidentally contacts the body of the camper trailer that I'll be using, which is metal, um, I can't get electrified just by leaning up against the trailer. I'm literally going to have to stick my tongue across active and neutral. Um, so that makes it a little harder to get electrified. But at the same time, it makes me kind of nervous because if I was in some freak accident able to connect myself to active and neutral at the same time, that generator would keep on going until it overloaded or until it killed me, or both. Um, so I have nightmares of frying. So I've got to make sure that I use properly double insulated stuff everywhere in that camper and that I keep that, um, that cable up out of the water too. So, um, but at least I know that I'm not crazy. I've made good efforts to make sure this is safe. So, I guess we're going to top it up with fuel. I'm going to have some dinner and we'll get to the long awaited nighttime test, which you guys won't see much of. I'm probably going to pull the cable on camera and let it run till it goes out and my wife wakes up half choking to death uh, in the middle of the night, which we hope doesn't happen. But uh, at least from that point, we'll have an idea on a normal load, how long we're going to get out of this thing. All right, I'll see you all when I pull the cord. All right, so more than 24 hours has passed since the last clip. We ran this last night and ran the CPAP machine on it and it hunted in and out and misbehaved and it stalled three times, about 30 to 40 minutes apart. Turns out that top vent on the fuel cap I'd left shut. Today I've had it running um, during the day with a similar load to the CPAP machine, just a, an electric fan or two that totals about the same amount of load, just as a resistive load. Now it's run for about five and a half hours in total. It still hasn't run out of fuel yet. Um, I'm going to call this video quits because I'm tired, it's hot, and I've got so many other things to do. Uh, but I will, in the description, when I eventually get the total of how long this will run, I'll add that to the description in this video. But at present, with three litres of fuel, it will certainly run for five and a half hours. I'm hoping to get it through to eight. So, uh, yeah. We'll uh, see you in the next video. I hope this has been informative. Ask away questions in the comments. I'll try and answer them if I can. Anyway... We'll see you later.